you have to understand, um, I don't, I don't run into ordinary people very often. Yeah, I, I should explain what I mean by that. Uh, for those of you who don't don't know me, my name is my name is Benjamin. Uh, my name is Benjamin. Uh, I'm a shepherd, or at least I I was. I used to be. You see, I never really met a whole lot of people. Uh, you see, shepherds were not we're we're not really popular people, so to speak. Part of the problem is you know we we work with smelly animals, we work with pretty dumb animals, we work out in fields, we sweat, we're always away from people, we're kind of dirty, you know, it, being a shepherd is not exactly a clean life. It always got kind of lonely. You see, I, I really, I only had my friends. And I did have real friends, for the record. I'm not talking about the sheep that I talked to, although there was a little bit of that. But uh, not just that. I, I had some friends, you know, we would kind of bring our sheep, bring our flock together and kind of watch and help watch, especially through the night. We would uh, take shifts, you know, allow some of us to get a little bit of sleep, but not too much because I have to sleep too, you know. And uh, So I, I, I had a few friends, but that was really all I had. You see, being a shepherd, whenever I would take a stroll through the town, everybody would cross over to the other side of the road. Nobody really wanted to be close to me or my friends. You see, we were dirty, smelly, unclean. So, just based off of the fact that nobody wanted to smell us, they would walk to the sides of the, of the road, the other side, and as if body odor being horrible is not bad enough, there were these people, there were these religious people, these uh, Pharisees, and they, they decided that we were unclean ceremonially, and that meant that if anybody came in contact with us, they would also be Ceremonially. If that ever happened to them, they'd have to go through this long process to get clean. They'd have to go through all these rituals and get right with God, so to speak. Being a shepherd was a, a very lonely life. Me and my friends, we really only had each other. We, we didn't really see family very often. They just, they didn't really want to have a whole lot to do with us. You see, no parent hopes that their son becomes a shepherd. It's a very <coughs> humble career. By humble, I mean parents can't brag about you to their friends. They don't, they don't want you to, to be a shepherd. And it gets very lonely. I always hated the way that I felt. I was unclean. I didn't smell good. I was unworthy. Nobody wants to feel like me. Nobody wants to feel like a shepherd. But you know, I wasn't always supposed to be like that. I wasn't. You see, I'm Benjamin. I was supposed to be one of those religious leaders. One of those people who got to make the rules and tell people how they were going to live their lives. No longer was I going to be unclean. I would have been able to tell other people that they were unclean. I would have been able to tell other people that they had to come to me. And instead of people passing on the other side of the road, whenever they see me, they would actually want to, you know, walk close to me. They want to rather than want to be away from me. <clears throat> I would have been something that my, my parents would have been proud of. And, you know, being a guy, I probably wouldn't have married by now. 
And on top of that, I would have been the prize man in the entire community. Right? Every man would have wanted their daughter to be with me. I would have been a Levi. I would have been a Pharisee. Or, you know, if I wasn't quite that good, I maybe would have been a Sadducee. Something that ends with C, I would have been. And I would have been Messiah. Everybody would have loved to have been around me. But I didn't really make the cut. I was never smart enough to be one of the religious leaders. You see, part of being a Pharisee, a Sadducee, something else, you see, I, uh, I had to be intelligent. You have to be part of the tribe of Levi, but on top of that, you have to be a very good student. You have to know the scriptures like the back of your hand. But I did love the school. I wasn't quite that intelligent. And memorization was just out of the question. I remember when I turned 12 and they handed me this long list of scriptures that I had to memorize. I, I thought they were kidding me. And I said, I, they said I couldn't be a man unless I memorized it. And to this day, I guess I'm still not a man. I, I mean, I could not memorize. somebody who was supposed to be at the top of the food chain to somebody at the very bottom. I became the lowest point in society. I hated who I became. Up until that point. I should probably explain what I mean by that. A long time ago in a town far, far away town was much like this. You know, we, we had shops. There was less cars. There were actually no cars. There was no Dollar General. There was uh, no gas station pizza either, which is something I've become quite fond of. <coughs> Mostly because I had to. There was a couple of restaurants, but for the most part, when you're in a pinch, you call some gas station pizza. We didn't have those things. But we had shops. And we, we had a lot of uh, blue-collar folks, you might say. People who worked with their hands. They were stonemasons, carpenters, builders. We had some, some store owners, people who owned um, restaurants, so to speak. We really only had bakeries and some people who made fish all the time, but, you know, it is what it is. There's always a love, but you can always smell the bread. You walk down the street and it would just hit you and it was that, that fresh baked smell. And then you get a little further and it smelled like fish, which was not as pleasant. The only time anybody ever didn't say something about how I smelled was when they were in the fish boat. We, me and my friends, we were camped out in, on a hill this field with our, our sheep and our, our flocks. And above that little town, far, far away, one night we saw something strange. Very weird. There was this star that appeared above the town. Almost as bright as the sun. It was very strange. Me and my friends, we, we live out in the fields. We see stars all the time. We also live in a, in a strange, strange land. We see a lot of strange things all the time, but nothing like this. Never a star <laughs> almost as bright as the sun hanging above this little town of Bethlehem. That was the weirdest thing I had ever seen. Up until a certain point. I should explain that to you. One night, the weirdest thing imaginable happened to me and my friends. 
Now, I'm sure you guys have seen your fair share of weird, but I think I've probably got you trunk on that one. You see, me and my friends, we were out, we were watching our, our sheep, watching over our flocks. Some of us, they were getting their night, getting their, their, their night's rest in. I was on duty. It was my turn during the night shift, probably like three o'clock in the morning. I was up. My other friends got to sleep, and I had to watch the sheep. One of my friends, he he got up. His name was his name was Ruth. It was Ruth. He had to go to the bathroom. He got up. He had uh, had a little too much water right with, you know during his his night shift. He got up and he had to use the bathroom. And I I saw him stir. I saw him get up. I was well aware he was there. What I was not aware of is that this one random dude was going to show up out of thin air with this huge, bright light, brighter than the star, brighter than the sun, right in front of us. Now, I'm sure you've seen your fair share of weird men. I don't know how many of them have ever glowed. Blue? Blown? I've never been very good with words, that's why I never made it into heresy school. <laughs> this glowing man shot out of thin air. He was not there, I promise. It was not just, it was dark and I couldn't see. My eyes had well adjusted. We were out in the countryside, you know, and I'm sure if you've been out in the countryside, you, you've seen the stars and the moon and it's bright, and it's nice, and for the most part, you can kind of see. So if you see somebody, you know they're there, and you can kind of see people. You might not be able to make out their face all the time, but you know, you can you can see a shadow. This guy was not there. This was very, very strange. Never seen anything like this. Now, this random man who appeared out of nowhere with this bright light. He has the audacity, the audacity to look at me and my poor friend Reuben, who is just trying to handle business, and now poor Reuben is borderline blind, I'm borderline blind, we are scared out of our minds. This man has the audacity to look at us and say, don't be afraid. Okay, Gabriel, or whatever your name is, uh, I'm a little nervous. I've never seen random people show up shining bright as the sun. I don't know about you. Maybe that happens in this foreign land that you come from. Maybe some other planet or one of the stars. Wherever you come from, maybe that's just a normal thing. It ain't normal here. The audacity. Now, once I start to gain composure, Right, I, I've kind of gathered my thoughts a little bit. I'm starting to readjust. You know, it was dark. Now it's not. And so, you know, just like when the sun comes up, my eyes are having to readjust to this newfound light. I'm starting to readjust. He told me not to be afraid. Kind of gathering some composure. Boom! A whole army of angels shows up whole army of these people. One person, that was enough. Two is too many. An army, that's okay. An army of them just appear and they're singing. Just singing. Talking about praising the Lord the Most High. It was so bad. All of my friends who were already asleep, they're just trying to they all woke up. They're all scared. I was gathering my composure. Now I'm scared again. But that first angel, he told me and my friends something. It's an interesting message that he definitely didn't expect to hear. You see, he told us on this day, in the city of David, which is Bethlehem, like 
done this. Not far from where we're camped out. The Savior has been born. The Messiah. I grew up in the tribe of Levi. I was never smart enough to cut it as a religious leader, but I did have some grievous feelings. I know that's where the Messiah was supposed to be born, but I never thought I'd see him there. And there's one question that always kind of puzzled me when, I, when we were told this. <laughs> Why not? Pharisee or astrologer, but I would I would argue that it was Haman who 
triumphed over them all. So he approached these barn doors and cracked open the door and made our way in.
scripture, and they 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 kind of understood uh, what we were saying, but they didn't really believe that the Messiah had just been born. You see, our our people, the the Israelites, we've been waiting for the Messiah for centuries. Our parents believed that the Messiah would be born in their time. Our grandparents believed that the Messiah would be born in their time. And our great-grandparents, and our great-great-great-great-great-great-grandparents, they all believed that they would be the ones to see the Messiah. So there's no way this would have happened in our lives. But we told people, regardless of their doubts, regardless of their preconceived notions, because the message of who Yeshua is, that the Lord saves, was so important to us. But why us? Why were we told? And why did we feel the need to tell of the people? And why was the manger the place where the Messiah was born? <coughs> Like I said, I was never good in school. Uh, we weren't very special, but maybe that's the point. Maybe the point is that we weren't very special. Yeshua was born and was lying in a manger, a feeding trough, not a palace. He didn't have some throne that was built for him right when he was born, or even maybe before he was born. Maybe in a lot of ways, Yeshua was just like us. He was ordinary in stature, born as a fragile baby, just like us. Maybe apart from being the Messiah, there really wasn't a whole lot special about him. His father, or I assume his father, the, the guy that clearly passed out after witnessing what had just taken place, he told us he was crying. Not exactly the line of trade that you expect the Messiah to be. Sure, he was probably kind of following his father's footsteps. Maybe there's something special about not being special. Maybe me and my friends, maybe we were told because Yeshua is for everyone. The message of salvation is for all people, regardless of your status in society, regardless of where you come from, regardless of being a religious leader, being a king, or being a shepherd. Maybe Yeshua is for you. <coughs> Maybe he comes the sins of not just those who are good enough, but those who are loved. Those who are not special. Maybe Yeshua was born in a manger just to show us how humble
Lord, we thank you for all that you do in our lives. We thank you that you sent your son so that we might be saved. We thank you for taking away our sins. We thank you that we don't have to be special to understand and communicate your, your message to all people. God, we thank you that it is a message for all people. Lord, we love you and thank you for all that you do. It was in your son's name, the name of Yeshua, that we pray. Amen. As per usual, this is the time of invitation. The truth of the matter is this, that Yeshua is for all people. It doesn't matter what your social status is. It does not matter how high you are in society or how low you are in society. Jesus is for you. Are there any decisions that you would like to make? Anything that you would like to pray about, now would be the time to do so as the band comes to lead us in one final song.